Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at breakpoints in Visual Studio. Breakpoints are a really great feature in Visual Studio that's been around for a very long time. They're super handy when you're trying to debug code, and honestly they're one of the main reasons that I use Visual Studio throughout the years. Back when I first started coding, it was Visual Studio 2005, and I was writing code in C++. So we had a couple of other options as far as IDEs go, but really I stuck with Visual Studio because their breakpoint system was really handy, and just throughout the years, I've gotten more familiar with it, and I don't know where I'd be without breakpoints. This video is just gonna be a quick overview of the breakpoint system in Visual Studio. If you already use breakpoints, you might learn something about some new functionality involving breakpoints. And if you haven't used breakpoints before, I highly encourage you to check them out, especially if you're just learning to code. I would say this is one of the most amazing tools when it comes to learning to code because you can see the variables changing um, as you step through your code. And it really kind of helps you understand what's going on under the hood. So if this video really helps you out, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would really help the channel out. But yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is actually add a breakpoint. And how do you do that? You can actually right click and then go over here to breakpoint and insert breakpoint. So it is a right click option. If you just don't remember anything else, um, you can definitely find it here. But you can also come over here to this green line that's on the left and you can just click and whatever line you click on, like line 42 here, it will add that breakpoint there. Um, the other thing is that there's a hotkey so if I hit F9 on the keyboard, that adds a breakpoint. So that's about it for your options for adding a breakpoint. You either wanna right click to add it there, you can click over here on the left, or you can use F9 on the keyboard. Now that we have a breakpoint in place, I'm gonna run the application, and this is just a silly little application I've been working on that's a virtual assistant guy. But it comes with a little control board here, and I added a test button that's gonna run this code that we've got that breakpoint in. So I'm gonna hit test and it's gonna run through and it's gonna hit my breakpoint. And A is zero because the first time we set it to zero. And that actually shows kind of the core reason that breakpoints are great. You can hover over variables and see like the value of A here is zero. And obviously that's super helpful, but if we didn't have the breakpoint here, we wouldn't be able to do that. We just have to do like a message box A or something like that. And I really hate when I'm coding in other languages that I can't use breakpoints in. It really feels like my hands are being tied behind my back. When I have to like write to the output window or do a message box or something instead of being able to use breakpoints. I just really enjoy breakpoints. Okay, so now that we've got this breakpoint in place, I want to show you the breakpoint pane itself. So if we go over here to debug, windows, and breakpoints, you get this window. And to be honest, I don't really use this window all that often, but it's definitely a core part of the breakpoint functionality. So I wanted to include this in the video. So one thing you may want to do is disable a breakpoint, but still have it there so that you can add it back later. And to do that, you would use this checkbox here. You can actually either go here and click disable breakpoint. And if you do that, then this box unchecks. So this is all kind of connected. But yeah, that's just what this is for here. It allows you to disable the breakpoint. And what that does is if I have this unchecked, it's not gonna hit that breakpoint. So I can hit F5 to have the code just start running and it's gonna run through like that breakpoint isn't even there. But then if you check it again, it's gonna fill in that bubble and that breakpoint's actually gonna get hit. So if you come up here and look at the options you have, you can delete the selected breakpoints. So you can check a bunch of breakpoints here and delete them you can delete all the breakpoints, you can disable all the breakpoints, you can export all of your breakpoints. Um, this is kind of neat if you have a bunch of breakpoints and you wanna remove them all, but then you want to import them back later. All right, so next after the export and import would be the go to source code option, which is kind of cool. So if you just wanna jump to the currently selected breakpoint, you can just click that and it'll jump to the right line. So that's kind of handy. And the next thing that we've got would be being able to add extra columns. So you can kind of see more information about your breakpoints. Like if you want to see what file it's in and stuff like that, there's some extra columns here so you can see some of the extra options that are available. The next thing is the search box, which is actually super useful because as you can tell, some of these options over here affect all of the items that you could see here, all of the search criteria matched items. So if I had a couple of breakpoints and I searched for character 13, only this one gets selected. And then if I delete all, 
it's only going to delete the ones that match my search criteria. That's kind of the power that the search box gives you here. I don't usually have enough breakpoints that I would need to use this search to search through my breakpoints, but that is still possible. Another really cool feature is you can actually edit the label of a breakpoint. So for this breakpoint, I'm going to say variable A. I'm just going to name it that. And for this other one, I'm going to name it edit label actions. So now we have variable A and actions. So I can search for actions and it just shows that one, which that's kind of handy. And it's nice to have these labels just so you can have a short description about each of your breakpoints. If you have a bunch of breakpoints in the application, that would be kind of nice. It's kind of like adding comments. You really want comments so you know what's going on with the code. Well, you can have labels so you know what's going on with your breakpoints. Another really cool feature when it comes to breakpoints is this hit count. It actually shows you how many times a breakpoint has been hit. So if I keep stepping through here, you can see this has changed to a one. And then if we step all the way back through, we're going to get a two on this line because it's about to get hit again. So now we've got a two. And then once we step to the next line, this breakpoint gets hit and that switches to two as well. So that's really cool as far as the hit count goes, but that actually gets more useful than just being able to see how many times the line was hit you can come over to conditions and you can actually set a hit count condition. So I could say, hey, you know, I only want this breakpoint to run when it gets hit five times. What that's gonna do is the code is not gonna stop on the first one through four times, but when it gets to that fifth time and it gets hit again, that's when it's gonna stop your code. So that's kind of handy if you wanna run through, say you have a loop that goes to a thousand times and you're having issues on the 505th time, you can actually use hit count to stop it on that 505th time and then walk through your code without having to step through it 5,000 times. So hit count is actually a very useful function when it comes to breakpoints. That's something I use fairly often. Another condition we can do here is conditional expressions. So you can put any kind of expression here. So I'm gonna say A equals five which is gonna be very similar to our hit count of five. I can rerun this and now that A equals five, it hit this breakpoint. But if I hit F5 again, it's just gonna keep running and then we're gonna get back to our code execution because it only gets hit when A equals five. So I'm gonna hit test again and I'm gonna skip over this breakpoint and just run it until a equals five again. So this can be super useful if you're looping through something and your code is breaking when a certain variable is set to something, you can have the breakpoint only get hit when that variable is equal to that value. And that can save you a lot of time while you're debugging. So one thing I want to add with these conditional expressions is that you should know that they are really slow to execute. So if you're just doing something like what I'm doing right now, that's going to be perfectly fine. They're pretty quick. But if you're looping through something 100,000 times, or you've got some process intensive code, just know that these are slowing your code down and you may start getting worried because your code took 10 seconds to execute instead of one second. Well, if you remove these breakpoints, then your code's going to go back to taking one second to execute and everything's going to be fine. Don't freak out and start worrying about having to optimize your code because you've added some breakpoints. They're just there to help you debug it. And once you go push your code into production, they're not going to matter anymore and it'll be fast again. Okay, so the last thing I want to go over is the watch window, which can be super handy. So if you go to debug and then windows and then watch, there's actually four of these, but I'm gonna use watch one. There we go. You can grab a variable and drag it down here, or you could just type in A. So if I go ahead and hit F10 and just keep walking through, you can see how its value changed to six. And then if I keep walking through, it changes to seven and then eight. And it just keeps changing as that value changes. And it's a really cool way to step through your code and see how your variables are getting updated. This has really helped me when I'm debugging. You can hover over a variable like this, but if you've got a bunch of variables that keep changing, it's really nice to have them listed out in the watch window. So you can just look down here and see all of the values as they change. And that'll give you an idea if something's changing the way you're expecting or if something's going wrong. So that's about it for breakpoints. Um, I think the most important thing to take away from this, you can click over here to add a breakpoint. And then if you go to conditions, you can add conditions to your breakpoint. Those are the things I probably use the most. Granted, I use the hotkey F9 to add breakpoints. 
but I'm always adding breakpoints so I can step through code if I'm debugging any kind of problem. And then I'm using conditional expressions so I don't have to go line by line. And I can just have my breakpoint get hit when I need it to. Well, that's about it for breakpoints. If you have any other features in Visual Studio that you would like me to go over, just let me know and I'd be happy to dive in depth into other features of Visual Studio. But that's about it for now. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would really help the channel out. I'll see you in the next one.